everybody. In this video, we're going to be generating some random melodies, but we're going to look to kind of smooth out some large leaps that are in those random melodies by using conditional statements. In a previous video, I talk about how to generate random melodies using different data structures like arrays or scales, which are built-in data structures to Sonic Pi that just contain specific notes of specific scales. Um, but the issue with using that method, it, it just is completely randomly picking these notes uh, from your, your data structures. And so you get a weird distribution as far as notes. So you might jump from a very high note to a very low note to a very high note to a very low note. And it doesn't really sound realistic or consistent with how you might hear uh, actual musical melodies. So to give you an example of what this might look like, I'm just going to quickly generate. So I'm going to be using a scale here. Uh, I'm going to store this scale in a variable. Uh, which I'm going to call SC for scale. And so the scale I'm going to use is just a E major scale. So when we're using the scale uh, data structure, we have to provide the root note of the scale, which I've indicated here as E4, which you could also do as a number. Then we have the option for what scale we want to do. I'm just going to do major. Um, and then an additional argument we can provide is num underscore octaves which just is how many octaves the scale will cover. The default will be one, but I'm going to do it two. Now, just so we can see here, I'm going to put this into console just so we can see the notes we're working with. So here's E major, so 64, 66, so all the way up to 88. So this is a two octave E major scale. Now, if I were to just generate a random melody here. Uh, so actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an array called melody. I'm then going to push a random note chosen from my scale into that. Now this isn't to play. This is just for me to create a melody so we can look at it for a second. And I'm going to put the melody here. So dot push is just a way that we can add a value to an array. So in this case, melody is an empty array. I dot push sc dot choose. So this is just choosing a random value from my array or of which is my scale from my scale there. All right. And since there's no sleep, it's just going to do that all immediately. And then we'll put out this melody. All right. So here's the scale, and now here is this random melody. So I have 88, 83, 75, 69, 66, 78, 85, 78. So the numbers are all kind of all over the place. Like here, for example, we go from 78 all the way down to 64, all the way back up to 85. So this just creates kind of a weird sound of very high and low notes kind of mixed together. So what we're going to do is we're going to look to kind of smooth out this and get rid of lots of big jumps in between. Now we're not going to get rid of all of them, but we're going to try and do something about that. Okay, so I can get rid of all of this code for now. So the first thing I'm going to do is just create a starting note. So instead of me kind of just choosing from SC, I'm going to create a variable called N, which is going to be my note, and I'm just going to start out with a randomly chosen note. Okay, now. I'm also going to create a variable called leap. So leap is going to store the distance between the current note that we're playing and whatever the previous note that we just played were. So for example, if I was looking at this melody here, this 83 and 83, the distance would be 0. But between 83 and 75, the distance between that would be 8 because from 83 to 75, there's eight notes in between, or eight numbers in between, which would represent the distance from this note to this note. And that's important uh, for what we're trying to do here. Okay, And then since I'm going to be looking at the distance between two notes, I'm also going to create a variable called previous n. I'm just going to initialize that at 0. But previous n is where I'm going to store the last note that I just played. Okay. Um, so this will all start to make sense as we put this together. So I'm going to create a live loop here. I'm just going to call it melody, and it's a live loop, so I'm going to do an end. So 
So the way I could just start this out is play n, and then we can sleep for 0 0.5, and then we could just update n with sc.choose. Okay, so now this could is one way I could just generate a random melody. So this is what a mel random melody would sound like, and as we see here, we go from like 73 to 81 to 68, so it's kind of jumping all over the place, all right? So what I'm going to do now is, I, before I assign n a new value, I'm going to store in this previous n the value of n. So what I have happening here is I start with a random note, that I'm assigning to n, and then play that note, I sleep, and then whatever note I just played, I then store in this previous n value, and then I assign a new random note from my scale into this n. So the last thing I'm going to do here uh, in this part is I'm going to create, uh, I'm going to find the distance between this n that I just played, which is now stored in previous n, and whatever the new note is. So I'm going to look at the distance between these two. So I'm going to say leap equals n minus previous n. Okay. And just to take a look, um, I'm going to say leap equals. Okay. And then we'll just take a look at this leap. So just we'll just put now the value, uh, the distance between the previous note and the next note that's going to play. Okay, so here we can see, go through, so the distance between, so here we played 83 and then the next note was 87, the distance between those was 4. Here we played 87, and then we played 66. The distance between those was 21, uh, negative 21, since we are going down. But uh, we're just going to be looking at the value itself, the absolute value. And then it kind of goes back. So we see we're getting a lot of big leaps here. 17, 17, 2 is fine, 4 is fine, eight's kind of big, 11's big. So um, melodies don't tend to jump around as much like this, so we're going to prefer these kind of lower numbers, and I think four is going to be kind of the threshold that we set, all right? So now that we have this leap, we can now basically, using conditional statements, say that if the leap is larger than a certain distance, so say if the leap is more than four, meaning the distance between the note we just played and the next note is more than four, um, that's, that's a big leap, and so we want to avoid doing that multiple times in a row. So we are going to set a conditional that if we do have a big leap, like say 17, that next time, or the next note that we're going to play is only going to be uh, a small distance from the note we just played. All right, so the way I'm going to do this is I'm just I play my n, so whatever n is, we're going to do that. And actually, I can keep this previous n here as well. Okay, so this is the stuff that's always going to be the same. I play n, whatever n is, I sleep, and then I assign uh, whatever note I just played into previous n, and then I'm going to choose a new n. But uh, before I do that, what I want to do is I want to check what the distance was between n and previous n, which is what's stored here in this leap value. So before before I assign a new value to n, I need to kind of check what the distance was between it. So here I'm going to put my first conditional, if, leap. Now here's the thing. Um, I would, since sometimes I get negative numbers, sometimes I get positive numbers, what I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm just checking the distance between the notes. I don't want to concern myself with positive and negative. So what I'm going to be doing here is using a little math function, which is to check for the absolute value. Okay, so I can just do dot abs in parentheses, and that will just make this a 
uh, positive number regardless of if it's positive or negative. So we look here, if it was negative 21, this is just going to read as 21. Or if it's negative 17, it'll just read as 17. So if the absolute value of leap is greater than 4, <laughs> all right, then we are going to do something here. Okay. Now, just kind of for that, if it's not, then we'll just choose another random one. All right. So in this conditional as well, we need conditionals are blocks, so we do need to add an end statement here. So this is if uh, leap is greater than 4, we're going to do something here. Otherwise, though, if it's not greater than 4, that's a small distance, and then we can just go ahead and choose the next one. And then it will store the value, the distance between those two notes in leap, and then we'll come back around again. So if the leap is larger than 4, right? what we want to do first is we want to find out what the index of the note in the scale was, okay? Meaning what, uh, where in this data structure was it, you know? Uh, so whatever note it is, what is the index in this data structure? So we consider it like an array. Is it the first note of the scale, the second note of the scale, the third note, uh, the seventh note, the twelfth note? in this scale. And the reason that that's important because once we know that, we can say, okay, the next note we want to play, if it's, say, the seventh note in the scale, the next note we want to play should either be the eighth note or the sixth note. It should be a note that is close to that. And so it's important that we know the index. So to do that, I'm going to create a variable called index. And then I'm going to use a function which is just going to check it will tell me what the index of a value that came up is. So if I say, okay, the note is 66, what is the index of that note in this scale data structure? So to do that, I do sc.index and then n. So whatever note I just played, this will tell me the index of that note in this data structure. So I need to find that. Once I have that, then I can say, okay, well, now make sure n is either one above that index or one below that index. And I want to kind of leave this, since this is random, I want to add some randomness to it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do if, and then I'm going to use something called one in. So this is something in sonic pi which basically is will return true or false and it's basically a one in so many chances or one in n chances okay so i could basically make a coin flip here and do one in two so there's a one in two chance that this is going to return true uh, and a one in two chance that it's going to return false. Now I could change this and that would change the odds. So I could do like one in six uh, and there'd be a one out of six chance that this would return to. Right now I'm just going to do uh, a one in two chance here. Okay, so but if one in two, so if this does return true, then n is now going to equal sc. Uh, and here I'm going to you treat this as an array, so I'm going to use square brackets. So then I'm going to write index, which is the index of whatever n was when it played n, okay? Uh, but I'm going to do n plus, or index plus 1. So say if n, the index of whatever note n was, was 5, this the next n, the next note we play in our melody is going to be at index 6. So it's going to be right next to it. So again, how this reads is if we made a big jump from one note to the next, then we're going to look at whatever note we just played. We're going to get the index of that. And then we are going to, the next note we play is just going to be the next note in the scale. So it's going to be very close to the note, and that will eliminate having big jumps over and over. Now, I'm doing one and two here, so if this is true, it will pick the note after it in the scale. But just to do else, meaning if this returns false, I'm just going to do n equals sc 
and then index minus one. So this just keeps a little bit more randomness in what we are doing here. And I gotta make sure I remember to do this block here. So that end is for this if else statement. And then I have this if else and end here, all right? So just to run through this again before we play it. So I start out, I choose a random note from my scale data structure, which is n. I play it. I store that value in this previous n. Okay. Now, if the distance between n and the previous note that I played is going greater than 4, uh, I will choose the index of what n was from my data structure, and then I will either play a note, one above it or one below it. However, if the distance between n and the previous note is less than 4, then I'm just going to go ahead and choose another random note. I don't have to worry about that because the notes were close enough. Then I will get a new leap, which is again the distance between n and the previous note, and then I'll just run through that all again. So let's take a look at this now. Uh, and what we're going to hope to see is we're not going to see as many of these big jumps, and we certainly won't see many of them in a row. So we will see small leaps and then the occasional big leap, but it will always be followed by a small leap. So let's see if how this worked out. So if we go through this, so we started with four, then we had a big one at 21, and then you see immediately the next one after that is two, then two, then two, then four, then eight, we have a big leap, and then followed by negative one. So a small leap, we have another big leap, which is immediately smaller by a fall loop, a small leap, big leap, followed by a small leap, big leap, followed by a small leap, another small leap, big leap, followed by a small leap, small leap. So you see, we never have more than one big leap at a time. So it's always kind of resolved. Now, sometimes we get this sort of big leap, small leap, big leap, small leap, uh, which, which is definitely going to happen. But we've at least smoothed this out a little bit so we don't have like a big leap followed by a big leap followed by a big leap we have kind of smoothed out the rough edges of the randomness so that we now kind of resolve these big leaps with smaller leaps to kind of smooth things out a little bit. So this is one way that you can still create random melodies, but at least add some sort of control over it so it's not just completely random. There's a bit more even distribution as you go from one note to the next. Um, so hopefully you can add this into some of your compositions to give it a bit more of a realistic feel, even though you are still generating random patterns.